Hello, our friends, Evolutionary Energy Arts family. Hello there. Welcome back. Welcome back, guys. We want to thank our newest patron. Say a huge thank you to Alex, our newest Patreon. Thank you so, so much. Thank you, Alex, for your support and everybody that's supporting us over on Patreon. And so we're going to start out with the tornadoes and the storms. And this is going to be focusing mostly on that as it was what woke us up, kind of. <laughs> oh, wow. We have had some serious, serious uh, lightning and thunder and downpours. And in fact, a powerful storm system tore through at least nine states and it still is doing uh, damage. And there is a lot of potential out there for severe storms today. So be aware of that everywhere from Texas, you know, all the way over um, well into the midsection and up into Ohio, where you have five different uh, tornadoes that were reported there in Ohio, two in Indiana and one in Texas. And it seems to be that all the buzz right now is, is just how intense last night, which is now turning into this morning, has been. Right. So I hope everybody stayed safe and stayed dry and uh, is okay. Absolutely. As you see this video, twin tornadoes right next to each other. This is in southern Hancock County. And... Yeah, again, Ohio is one of those areas that uh, can be very, very er earth, not earthquake prone, uh, although they do get some unusual earthquakes up there, uh, tornado prone. But in these times, you know, you got to just expect the unexpected. And I think that is a good way to uh, keep prepared. So two twisters over eastern Indiana, western Ohio. And you can see some photographs that are coming in. Boy, that looks really ominous. Uh, you watch for that circular movement of the clouds. And here's a wall cloud. This is in Melbourne, Oklahoma. Very, very l low hanging. Uh, and, you know, that is something that I was used to seeing down in Florida. These shelf clouds that would just be just so low, uh, you'd be amazed. And you have floods in central Java. Uh, again, they, all over the globe, you find so many uh, different areas being inundated and flooded. And of course, we'll have somebody make a comment. Oh my God, I can't watch you because you just called it a globe. You know, it's it's it is what it is. Arabian Peninsula. This is in Oman. Oman has had massive flooding, and they also have come straight out and talked about a cloud seeding uh, program. So has Los Angeles. When you think about it, L.A. County uh, talked about a cloud seeding program, and then we had these massive floods there too. Of course, the, all these cloud seeding programs have been really going on for, for decades and decades. Weather control, uh, from what I've seen as far as declassified documents and patents, go all the way back to 1895, as far as in our modern times. But the reality is it's been ongoing for thousands of years. Ongoing, really. I mean, the technology and everything that's going on is just nothing new. It, the only difference is, is we kind of know that there's technology now. Yeah, and, and that's part of the great reveal. So we had this. This sticks out like a sore thumb, as you see here, right in the very middle of the Atlantic Ocean on the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. What do we have? A 6.0. And actually, when you zoom in, you'll see there's uh, six altogether. So this is being reported at a 10 kilometer depth. Uh, we see a 4.9, 4.8, 5.2, 4.8, 5.1, and that 6.0. All these are being reported at a 10 kilometer depth. I asked Cindy to feel into this. What do you feel? Is this natural or artificially flavored? You know, this one does. It feels like Earth is doing this herself. But then again, there's a lot of other pressures going on. So I, w I wouldn't be surprised if this was something reactive that Earth is reacting to we'll just I, I definitely keep an eye on it because it's <laughs> it's right on that big uh big line there absolutely and i do think as we were talking about unusual plane movements in the uh last video last night i i do think that when the action starts uh in the u.s 
It will be uh, through the use of technology again. Was it natural or was that, you know, I mean, was it La Palma going off co uh, concurrent with Cascadia going that caused these, you know, disasters to occur or was it, you know, uh, some sort of technology? And then I do think there will be the use of, of Russian subs as there was reports of Russian subs along the coastline. And uh, we were watching the ship movements. And when we made the video last night on eARTS, they were locking up our browser here, which they've kind of compromised. And it's interesting, too, because I'll, I'll see certain uh, posts that come through, certain comments that come through that feel like uh, literally the feds. <laughs> As you can see, there is so many um, of these different military planes circling areas, zooming in, looking for something. Um, and somebody said Canadian Prepper was saying that there was reports of Russian uh, subs off the coastline. That's to be expected. You know, in, in World War II, uh, lots of reports of uh, German U-boats <coughs> off, off our coastlines and in World War II, there were many uh, ships that went down to the bottom of the sea. So, you know, and, and both military and non-military just simply supply. And then, of course, the sinking of Lusitania. Anything and everything can happen, including earthquakes in Jersey. That's, you know, kind of a curious little one. And, you know, I remember we had that quake over in... Uh, New York City area, which was really curious, along with reports of explosions. Now, this one uh, is 8.7 kilometers deep, 2.2. It's just a slightly unusual area. Here, here and now, every now and again, you will see some in this area. As I was saying, you know, you'll find some up through um, Ohio and, and up over here along Lake Erie from time to time. They're just rare, but in, in these times you want to pay attention to kind of everything that is going on. And uh, we do have a 5.0 down in uh, El Salvador. As we were talking about, there was uh, some reported a 6.0. This is showing 5.6 very close to Fukushima. And then, of course, uh, a lot of talk about Cascadia and the San Andreas. And then we had a asteroid that came pretty close, 0.07 of a lunar distance. Uh, so that is a very, very uh, close call, uh, but it is more than likely no larger than 20 feet in diameter at most. So, you know, chances are it probably would have just burnt up. Thinking about moving. Anybody that's thinking about moving, these five states just recorded the largest housing inventory surges. So when you look at the states right now where you could probably maybe catch a buy, look at number one. It's actually Florida. Now, Florida is a very, very volatile market. It goes up. It goes down as far as real estate. And that's because for years, there's been so many second and even third houses in Florida. When the economy gets bad, uh, you will have people often you know, divest themselves and try to sell their second homes in order to tighten their belts. And so this is how the market could be so crazy in Florida. And uh, I've moved to Florida twice in, in my lifetime and seen the ups and downs firsthand where, you know, I, I mean, a house that when I was first uh, looking in that area, I was looking at houses in the, say, $150,000 range, and they had been going often for 300 plus, and then, you know, what because it was a dip, 2008, you know, was a, a dip, and, you know, you could get incredible deals. Well, you know, there's there's so much coming right now. Uh, we're our heads are going to be spinning, but um, probably by the time we get to the Fourth of July, our heads will be spinning with all that has happened between now and then. I really do think that's the case. Um, Mississippi, twenty eight percent increase. Louisiana, twenty eight percent increase. Alabama, twenty seven percent increase. Arkansas, twenty three percent increase. So you might be able to find big deals in those states. And also, you know, Florida, 
while I love it, I don't like being stuck in the peninsula. And uh, with all the visions I've I've had over the years, um, I do feel Florida is going to come under under target. So if I was in Florida, I'd want to be higher up in Florida and able to get out quickly uh, instead of being you know down in Miami or even as far as as Naples and uh, you know e- anywhere below. Uh, Tampa because I just think it will take too long to get out if something happens so you know I just want to share that with you guys and I know I've shared it in the past uh, Mississippi Louisiana Alabama Arkansas you if you want to add into that I'm not sure what the markets look like it looks like in say uh, southern Missouri or some parts of Tennessee I think these are great homesteading states. I, I think these are great places where um, you can find land that's going to be pretty fertile. Um, you know, get enough, unless they give us a drought, which they could do anytime, but usually get enough water, uh, have good enough soil. I mean, to me, you know, those places are, are places uh, that would make sense as long as you, know, you stay a little bit off the coast. Um, you could get deals in those states and, you know, develop a, a homestead probably uh, so much cheaper than your typical home in, say, obviously anywhere in the Northeast or California along the coast or, you know, Washington and Seattle too because um, that can be very, very pricey. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I think there's a lot of um, old farms that somebody might be able to go in and and reinvent or uh, open back up again. Just a lot of opportunity there. You just have to be willing to, you know, um, <laughs> maybe not live live in the best circumstances for a little while if you need to go there and live in in the situation and kind of reinvent as you as you live there. But it's it's definitely opportunity. The growing is really really good now florida i could just never bring myself to go there because i've always seen some like mike said this stuck stuck nature and not able to get out and i just i can't do that but the others um if if i'm not mistaken when we did do our research i think the taxes are even pretty good and you might be able to get good tax breaks if you're under some type of a farm thing or what is that called a homesteading exemption and then it's if you get a good enough deal cheap enough you won't have taxes after it's paid off so it's all really good opportunity to me yeah absolutely and again those those other four states you really could find stuff um you you could find something that needs a lot of work for a hundred thousand dollars uh sitting on some acreage and and turn it into a homestead um so you know if you are able to get financing now we the banks are probably going to collapse and i don't want to go too long in this and go you know we could talk about uh this and other videos i i do think there is a banking collapse coming probably this year because the war is coming this year so um this is you know uh, all things to take into consideration but again you know choosing your place uh where you want to be able to try to ride out the big, big storm, which is coming upon us now, really. Um, it, it, these are some states that, that could be decent choices. Uh, we would, it, you know, for affordability, uh, if it weren't for affordability, we probably would be in Idaho with Cindy's uh, family because, you know, Idaho is great farming. Uh, it's just simply there was nothing there that was in our price range where we could actually build you know a decent little homestead so you know there are other options uh the guides have just been pretty generic in saying uh in these times the safer places are going to be towards the center of the country is how they word it worded it towards the center of the country in other words away from the coastlines so these states the inventory is very tight nevada is at the top of the list you know, so go figure, right? 32% negative, Illinois, New Jersey, Idaho, and Rhode Island. And again, so Idaho, there's family there. This is where uh, Cindy grew up. Um, and it is, you know, there is great farm country there. Um, but again, and a lot of the reason why this is in such high demand is a lot of people are leaving California and Washington and Oregon, you know, but California especially. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that with you. I, I always find these things 
interesting and this is interesting you know uh, you need a friend in this times you need somebody that you could depend on somebody to lean on somebody that maybe will be able to carry you or maybe you can carry somebody for a while in these times when the times get rougher we're going to truly know who our friends are and you know they're going to be those people that just put themselves out to help each other and that's a beautiful thing indeed it is and you could always count on you know man's best friend there especially a doberman <laughs> much love source bless and namaste namaste